Hello there, and today I'd like to show you how to boot PS2 Linux onto your PS2. Before we begin, I'd like to say special thanks to Sonic Runner 1000 for helping me out so much. You rock, man. Now, you're going to need a few things before you begin. You are going to need a flash drive. With me, I have an 8GB PNY flash drive, but you can use pretty much anything. Um, and after that, you're going to need a memory card with FreeMC boot installed. It has to have FreeMC boot, otherwise this will not work. You also need a regular generic USB keyboard, preferably USB 2.0. I know there's some 3.0 out there, so try to avoid them. And you would also like to use a mouse. USB 2.0 also. Um, you will also need a PS2 network adapter. Well, for internet purposes, you really want this to connect to the internet and whatnot. And if you don't have Ethernet in your house, you might want a wireless contact point such as this. What this basically does is allow you to connect to your Wi Fi from your PS2. During this video, we will connect a wireless contact point to the network adapter and then connect to the internet that way, since that's an issue to some people. We will also need some DVD-R discs. You will also need a regular PS2 controller. And last and most obvious, you are going to need a PS2 console. You also need to get some software off the internet. You need to get PS2 Linux Live version 2.iso. The link is in the description. Just go there and it will automatically download. Just have patience because it will take a while. It takes roughly like 30 minutes to download. Be patient. You need Kloader 2.4. Um, go to SourceForge as well for that. I'll have a link in the description. Don't worry about it. And it's a relatively quick download, a few seconds. You also need to download and set up ImageBurn. Go to ImageBurn.com. I will leave a link in the description below and download ImageBurn. You also need to download Power ISO or something that allows ISO editing. Go to PowerISO.com and go ahead and download. Not too big of a download. Should take roughly a few seconds. After you download and install it, open it up. It will ask for a registration code and for which case type this in. And from there you're registered. Now the last thing you need to do is download and install 7-zip also on sourceforge.net and I'll leave a link in the description below. Relatively short download, small size. Now uncompress the PS2 Linux Live version 2 from a .7z to an ISO image. You're going to do this using 7-zip that we just downloaded. Before we do anything, we're going to make a folder we're probably going to label it something obvious like PS2 Linux. It doesn't matter what you title it, just as long as you can keep a track of it. Now from here, go to Start and open up 7-Zip. Open the Manager. And from there, look for your .7z file, which in our case is the PS2 um, Linux Live DVD. So just search through your files until you get to, you know, your desktop. You can tell by finding your folder. Um, scroll down until you find it. Make sure it's a .7z extension so that you got the right file. Then open it up and extract it. When you extract it, you want to extract the contents to the folder you just made on your desktop, labeled PS2 Linux. So open that folder, click it, and hit OK. Therefore, everything, the whole image will go into that folder. 
If you're wondering why this happens so fast in the video, it's because of a magical thing called editing. So after this point you're all set and um, your .iso image is in your PS2 Linux folder. Now that you've extracted the ISO, you have to burn it with image burn. So open image burn. And from here, right, click right image to disk, um, do file, browse source file. And for your source file, you want to pick your disk image, your .iso image, which should be in the folder on your desktop, labeled PS2 Linux. Double click it and select it. Hit OK, and then move on. Um, from this point, you need to get some disks and put them into your computer. Once you insert the disk, you are ready to go. Just click that icon right there, and the image will begin burning at the proper speed and proper settings, proper everything. It'll take a while, though. Um, be patient with this. If you are using a laptop, that will come up. Uh, just hit OK. From here, you are set, and you have burned your image. Uh, just close Image Burn, and from here, we're set with that. Um, from here, you're going to use Power ISO to extract all files from the compressed ISO image. Begin with opening Power ISO, which you will find right there, or on your desktop, wherever you put the icon. And from here, what you want to do is you want to drag the ISO image into Power ISO. Now from here you need to double click the ISO image and from here it will automatically start digging the files out of the ISO. It will take a long time though. Be patient. So once you're done you want to put that all into a folder and extract it to a flash drive which is what I'm doing here. I extracted all the files to a, fo a folder I made named uh, flash drive and um, basically what I'm doing here is I'm removing all the files from the inside of the folder and taking them out. After a while it happens and you remove everything and then you can just delete the flash drive file since there's nothing in it anymore. From this point make sure that you have everything. If even one of these is missing Linux will not work. Just check and have a look and when you're set um, get kloader2.4.elf and drag it to the root of the flash drive and from there you are set with your USB stick. From this point go ahead and remove your USB stick from your computer and then after that you're ready to start. Now you have to get ready because we're about to set up Linux on the PS2 after all the preparation. Going back to the materials that we had earlier, um, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to get the memory card with FreeMC boot installed, and you're going to insert that into memory card slot 1 on your PS2. From here you get your USB flash drive and plug it into one of the USB ports provided on the PS2. Now after that what you want to do is you want to get your USB keyboard and you want to plug it into um, one of the USB slots, whichever one's available on your PS2. After all that, you're going to want to plug in your PS2 controller right in the same slot as the memory card, you know, PS2 controller slot 1. See, PS2 controller. And go ahead and plug it in. So now that you've done that, um, it would be wise to plug in your network adapter to the back of the PS2. You may not have to do this if it's slim, I'm not quite sure in that circumstance. But on the fat PS2 you just insert it onto the back and then you screw it in with a quarter or a coin. That's what's recommended by Sony anyway. So go ahead and screw that into the back of your console. And when you're done, um, if you don't have Ethernet in your house, um, and you have Wi-Fi instead, use, the wire, use a wireless adapter such as this and connect to it, um, connect to the PS2 adapter via Ethernet.
as I'm doing here. Now after that point, if you've presetted everything onto it, um, plug it in and from there you're all set network wise. Now that you're all set up on your PS2, it's all set to boot, um, turn your TV on and, well, more importantly, turn your console on. Quite helpful, don't you think? Anyway, turn your PS2 on and hit reset. And then open the disk tray out again. And from there, your free MC boot will come up. Okay, good. Now that you're here, go to U Launch ELF. Go down using your joypad and then hit X on the controller. So enter U Launch ELF. Then when you get there, you want to hit circle for file browser. And then you want to go down to mass using the joypad, go down to mass, hit circle to enter it. And from this point, go down to kloader2.4.elf. Before selecting anything at all, what you want to do is you want to open your disk tray and insert your disk. And then close the disk tray. From here, go back to kloader2.4.elf and then hit circle on your controller. From here the fun begins. Sit back and watch Linux boot itself.
Okay, an X will show up sooner or later on your screen. Then your mouse will appear. And just wait till your dock appears. And from after that point, you're completely loaded into PS2 Linux. Congratulations! Now, what you want to do is you want to remove your controller because you're not going to be needing it anymore from this point. And you're also going to want to remove your flash drive and replace that with your um, USB mouse. So just take out your flash drive. Mine was being a problem right there. And then just plug it into the USB port your flash drive was, part was occupying. From this point, you have a mouse and keyboard attached, you have a network set up, and you're booted into Linux. So from here, you're all set. But um, just for an extra bonus, uh, here's how to open up the web browser. So you just drag your mouse around and right click, and you'll see Dillo browser up there. Click it, and from there, it should take a few seconds or so. And eventually, your browser opens up. Um, it automatically goes to google.com, and um, I'd imagine you don't remember Google ever looking like this, but um, when you're on the internet with the PS2, things tend to look rather strangely probably due to lack of Flash or Java and a mix of things. But yeah, you're using your keyboard, just search whatever you want, go wherever you want, and that's how you get to your browser. Oh, also, as a bonus, um, go right-click and um, go into the bottom menu, um, labeled Fluxbox menu, and from there you can shut down your PS2. Just thought that would be a little helpful. So that's how you get to your browser and that's how you turn your console off. Normally you will see this when your PS2 turns off if you're booting Linux. So this is normal and this is nothing to be afraid of. Now around here your console turns off and just shut your console off on the back. And from there, you're all set. Anyway, I hope this helped you, and good luck.